What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, well, honestly, I have been putting this off. It has been one of the things that I have been dreading doing, but it is really the next step in our process on the Trans Am, and that is installing a ABS delete and a line lock. So, I bought this kit several years back, and I just never did put it on the car that I had, and it is set up for a three channel rear end with no trash control. They also make a four channel as well, and this is from SJM Manufacturing. I will put their link down below, of course, but I I don't know what it is about brake lines. I just hate doing the flares, and I'm hoping that we're not going to have to do very many because a lot of your lines are pre-bent in the kit. The one that goes to the proportioning valve goes up to the brake master, and the one that goes to the line lock, those two are pre-bent, but the lines that go from the actual brakes or the brake lines that go on the K-member up to these are not. So that is the lines that we're going to have to bend and probably put flares on and I just don't have a real great flaring tool and I've never purchased one because to be honest the ones that are worth it are probably two three hundred dollars from like Eastwood and I just don't do enough of it to warrant having them but anytime you install a K member you are gonna have to do a little bit of bending to get your stock lines in and that's why I haven't addressed that but the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get the master um, out from my group of parts over there and we're going to bolt it on and I'm going to go ahead and put on the pre-bent lines that go to the proportion valve and the actual line lock solenoid itself because like I said they're pre-bent so that it's nice that the kit does that. The other thing the kit does is um, it comes with all the wiring which we're not going to work on that right now. We're just going to concern ourselves with actually getting the brake lines to fit and once we get the brake lines to fit then we can put the actual calipers and rotors back on get this thing on the ground where it's rolling again so that is the number one priority right now is i want to be able to roll it around and um, this is really the next step to do that i will say that the sjm instructions are possibly the worst instructions i've ever seen in my life it makes no sense but uh, we're going to try to work our way through it so i'm going to go grab that master cylinder we're going to set it into place and um, hopefully get some of these lines routed now the very first thing I'm going to do after I, I just clean this master cylinder off a little bit, it wasn't too bad, but we're going to knock the brake lines off here because obviously we're going to be installing the new ones. So get them out of the way and then we'll start to put the new ones into place. So once you have those new pre-bent lines kind of loosely tightened on there, I, I didn't get them really tight because you may have to move them around, go grab the two nuts that go on the uh, end of your brake master and then we'll be able to set it into place, get it kind of snug and that'll give us a positioning where we need to mount the actual proportion valve and the solenoid itself. Uh, the other thing I've got here is a towel just in case it leaks. I've got everything cleaned off of it, I don't think it's going to, but just in case I want to be safe since I just painted this. so. Uh, let's get that into place and then we'll kind of position the lines where we need them. Now once we have that tightened up, we uh, kind of have the placement of our lines and as you can see this line's completely out of whack and we're going to have to move it around, but the actual proportion valve line which your rear brakes run off the front side and your um, front brakes run off the back side of this. But um, what you've got now is a place where you can mount this. Now it does come with two mounting bolts, so we're gonna go ahead and drill and get this bolted into place. That way it's not moving around. And then obviously once we get that into place, then we can work on the positioning of the actual um, line lock solenoid. All right, so now that this one's into place, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a spot to mount it. Uh, there's just two holes and you need a drill bit that's obviously the size of the bolts that come with the kit in order to bolt it to the fender. And the good thing is we still don't have our inner fender in because that's one of the reasons is we can get on the inside and tighten this down. Now once you get the holes drilled, you can go ahead and mount this. And I did take the vacuum and um, vacuum out all the metal shavings. 
I wish that I would have waited on the harness, but oh well, it was all right. We can vacuum out the um, shavings out of the way, but let's go ahead and mount this and then we'll work on this line. Now something to keep in mind when you're tightening those up is that is just an aluminum housing so don't get real crazy. The other thing is I did put a little piece of foam in between just so it's not bouncing around and um, you don't have to do that. The kit doesn't ask for that. It's just to me it seems like that rattling around could loosen up over time so I just wanted to put I just put a piece of felt behind it. Now that this is in place I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up and you don't want to get real crazy on it either but we will check for leaks, obviously, as we get the system filled up, but just want to make sure it's snug. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Now that we got everything tight on this line, we need to move to this line. And obviously, it is not in the correct place. I'm going to have to loosen it up there and move it to the bottom side of this bigger line. Now that we have that line moved to the bottom side, you notice some brake fluid spilled out. So you want to make sure and try to catch that if possible. And uh, we need to figure out our placement for the actual solenoid for the line lock. And it's going to be somewhere in this area, but we're going to kind of hold it up and try to partially thread the line in to see where we need it. And then we'll unthread the line, mount it and get everything tightened up on it. Now I'm pretty sure that we've got this in the position that we want. Um, you're going to have to kind of move it around and the lines aren't 100% perfect, but the, the couple things that I want to make note of and that you don't want is you don't want this rattling on the top of the fender. So I'm not going to mount it too low where it's dragging on the fender. So I want it just far enough up that um, there's no dragging on the fender. And then obviously we will mark these holes, drill those, and then get it into place. Well, I was having some issues getting my drill into that spot. So what I'm doing is I marked it here on the back side and we're going to drill through that way since we've got the two first ones for alignment. Now, once you get your holes drilled, I, go, I went ahead and put two of the uh, nuts and bolts in. I'm going to go ahead and put all of them in and get it nice and snug. And then we'll be able to hook up this top brake line. Once we do that, then we'll be able to move on to the fun part, which is the part that I was not looking forward to, and that's getting the lines to fit up in place um, to all of these components. Now, once we get this mounted, there is a adjustment on the bottom so this can move around. You need to tighten that up. Depending on which model you got, um, it's a 17 millimeter on mine. It's just an adjustment nut on the bottom that keeps that um, actual solenoid from moving around. So I've got it snug. We need to go ahead and tighten up the brake line that goes into the actual solenoid itself and then the one that goes into the master cylinder. Well, now, guys, that we've got, like I said, everything mounted, um, I've just got these lines. These are lines that came with the kit and not sure what I'm going to be using or not using, but... I'll get to that. I think the next step is I'm going to go ahead and route the ones that go on the K member and um, at least get everything up here so I can kind of see what all needs to tie together. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to get back under the car and um, tie this back up in the stock location. That way I know um, exactly how long the pieces I need to make are or where they need to mount. So uh, that sucks because obviously I'm going to have to crawl on the ground to do that. but. Uh, let's move on to the actual K member and the ones that are going to tie in with that. Well, over here on the passenger side, or sorry, the driver's side, we are ready to start routing the brake line. Now, I've got the factory brake line as it came out of the car here. Obviously, the um, flex piece goes up on the front, and this piece goes along the side. Now, how this originally mounted was it went around the K member kind of like this. 
So we are gonna have to bend things around, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our mounting tab into place, which is the piece that we cut up in a couple videos back. And uh, that will allow us to kind of get a gauge on where everything needs to be bent and uh, where we need to move stuff. So we're gonna get this into place first and uh, it faces, yeah, let's see here. I believe it faces like this. It used to clip on the bottom of the K member. So uh, obviously we don't have that as an option anymore. And um, so we're gonna get this in place. Now I'm not gonna run that down all the way tight because chances are we're gonna have to move it back and forth in order to get um, it in the proper place. So now we can go ahead and try to put the brake line up into place. And like I said, we're gonna have to bend it around a little bit, but that's fine. It's That's part of installing one of these K members. The other thing is I really wish that BMR would put the factory mounting places in, but probably because you have to bend the lines around, they can't do that. But it would sure be nice if you had a couple other mounting points and you didn't have to use zip ties in order to keep it in place. But let's get that brake line up into place and I'll probably even grab the clip that holds this line on just so we can get a good gauge of where the line needs to go. actually put the wrong bracket on the wrong side I was wondering why nothing lined up like it was supposed to and that is because well I got the wrong bracket on this side now they were marked left and right but when I cut it I cut through that marking so this is the actually the other side so let's get the right one on now hopefully the brake line will set up in a little better than what it did before uh, it's still not going to be great. You're going to have to bend it, but it does look like it sets in a little better than it did. All right, we are going to have to bend it a little bit. Um, I'm probably just going to get my, I've got a pair of pliers that actually are four brake lines, and uh, I'm going to straighten this out a little bit and make it look a little nicer. You can see I've already scratched up my paint. Probably should have done this before I painted it, but oh well, we've got um, a pretty good alignment here and I like the way that that looks. The only issue is it looks like it's touching the, um, the strut. So we're gonna have to bend it back a little bit more. And uh, this is just kind of one of those trial and error things, guys, you're, you're, there's no exact way, there's no exact science to getting it right. You're just gonna have to keep moving it around until you get it where you want it. So I've been it around a little bit at a time and I think I'm happy with that or at least um, up until this point. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the brake, the actual caliper and get everything lined up. And that way we kind of have an idea of where everything's gonna be setting, uh, where this needs to be adjusted. And then we will move to the inside. Obviously we're gonna have some work to do on the inside. Now one of the things that I'm gonna do before I grab the brakes and put them into place is I'm gonna go ahead and torque the uh, bottom ball joint and the upper ball joint and the reason I'm going to do that is um, it may be a little harder to get in here uh, once I get the brake into place so you might as well go ahead and do that now the bottom one 81 foot pounds the top one's 39 of course you're gonna have to align your cotter keys so make sure that um, you don't back it off in order to do that you might have to move it just a hair uh, one way or the tighter direction, don't loosen it up, and then slide your cutter keys into place, and then we'll put the brakes back on. Get those keys into place those cotter pins or cotter keys whatever you want to call them and bent over um, now we can go ahead and put the brakes on everything's torqued down other than the tie rod which i will do last i want to still be able to move it back and forth so let's go grab the brakes and slap them on so the very first thing we're going to do is put the rotor on and uh, there's no specific direction other than there is a left and a right if you're using the same brakes that i am now once you get that into place 
we're going to go ahead and put the rotor on. Now it is important to make sure you put some thread locker on the bolts that hold the bracket into place. The way I took these apart, I just took the bracket and everything off. So the uh, after we get those in, we're going to run them down and they get torqued to 74 foot pounds. Now I went ahead and ran the brake line up into the sleeve that holds it here and I put the clip on. And so what I've noticed is that I had to bend this line just a little bit out in order for it to not kink or do some weird things when I turn lock to lock. So um, now we're going to go ahead and fish the brake line up into place, the one that we were bending on earlier, and see if we can maneuver it where it needs to be. Uh, like I said, I'm going to start here and worry about basically on this side of the vehicle and then once we get this side and the other side where I want it then we'll worry about where it needs to come up and meet on the inside of the frame rail. Now that I've got this where I want it and you can see I had to wrestle it back and forth, take that clip out Put it back in i'm going to go ahead and start to zip tie down this ledge here on top on the top side of the k member and then we will start working on the inside and possibly even go to the other side but i think this is going to work uh, it's kind of snug and you do have to take the clip out and thread this together um, kind of while you're putting it together but and you can see i boogered up the paint but that's not a huge deal we can always just touch that area up with some touch up paint. And uh, well, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and put some zip ties on this. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna get real crazy yet because I'm not real sure. I'm probably gonna have to take it off in order to flare the other side. But um, this gives us a good starting point. Well, you can see that I've zip tied it in several places here just to keep it kind of in the area that I want it. Like I said, we're probably gonna have to take it back out. So I'm not even gonna trim these tails off yet because I'm going to try to maneuver it around and up into a place on the inside where I feel like it's gonna work. We're onto the other side and we're gonna attempt to get this lined up. Um, I've seen a couple different pictures of people routing them completely different. Uh, BMR actually calls for them to be just bent a little bit and routed the same way. So if this doesn't work out, we may scrap this whole deal and start over, but it looks like that other side is gonna be fine. It's just gonna take some time bending and moving and uh, this is really the hardest thing that I've done on this car so far because it's not like a just a set set of instructions. It's kind of one of those, um, I don't know, it's just it's trial and error type deal. So let's get the bracket into place and then we'll try to line things up and get at least this side done and then we'll work our way down to the middle. I think I've got it where I'm going to set it. The only thing I might change is I might put a spacer between the mount on the uh, K-member and this actual piece that holds the brake line in place. I might do that just to bring it down, you know, a quarter of an inch or so. I don't think I have to, but I just don't like it riding up against the body of the car. Now, that's not technically going to be moving, so it shouldn't be a big deal, but it would make me feel better if I put a spacer here, but other than that, I think we can go ahead and zip tie these lines and then start working our way towards the center. Well, I ended up putting two washers here to pull this down a little bit so it wasn't rubbing up top. You can see where the paint scratched, but I went ahead and zip tied this down. I think we are good here. I've moved the wheel lock to lock. The only thing that bothers me a little is it looks like this is resting on the strut or the uh, spring of the strut. And uh, I think once it gets the suspension loaded, that's not going to be an issue. I think it's going to be right in between that. But I did bend this just a hair out in order to pull it away. So um, really, that's the, the best bet. There's not a whole lot more you can do aside from um, you can bend this back a little bit. The problem with that is it really puts a strain on it when you're turning this direction. So... Uh, this is really the best spot for it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to try to bend the rest of the line and then we'll just kind of adjust accordingly. You know, these aren't the stock lines and I'm sure that, you know, all of this stuff working in conjunction is probably, you know, not something that was set up uh, from the beginning. You know, BMR, they make their K-member and A-arms and everything around the stock setup. So the fact that I'm running these lines, you know, they may be just a hair shorter. I'm not really sure, but like I said, I don't have any binding right now side to side. The only thing I'm uh, looking at is that touching and it's not actually touching, but uh, it's just really close. And like I said, we're going to wait until the suspension's loaded. So let's move on to the inside. And uh, well, this is going to get real fun because we're going to have to bend a lot of line here. We got really lucky on this side. There wasn't a whole lot to bend, but there will be in the center. So for the most part, this line is pretty pliable and um, you can see that I was trying to straighten it out and get at least get it over to this other side and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. It's not perfect. Uh, I might mess with it a little more, but I'm going to go ahead and put some zip ties on it and um, you don't want to bend it too much. You notice it like right here, I kind of, I didn't want to get that 90 degree angle because you don't want to risk pinching the line. but. I'm liking the way it's coming out. I'm going to go ahead and start to zip tie some of the sections down. That way um, it at least stays in place and uh, then we will keep going from there. Well, let's take a look at it all zip tied down and it looks alright. You know that line's not perfectly straight. but. We're running up into this area over here and I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go ahead and put on the uh, brake line holder, the original one that held the brakes in place or the brake lines in place. That way we can get an idea of what, uh, where we need to put our T because for the front brakes coming out of the solenoid we have to have this T fitting and uh, in order to do that then uh, we've got to get everything in place. So. I'm probably going to go ahead and cut these lines at some point soon and uh, makes me kind of nervous because I mean I guess it's not a big deal you can always re-bend brake lines but it's just not something I like to do it seems like flares and fittings always f don't they always leak but hopefully everything will go well um, like I said let's go grab that piece that goes in the that originally held the brake lines and get it into place and maybe try to line up some of this stuff I'm actually thinking for the uh, two front brake lines, I'm going to run it through that stock piece and then I'm going to attempt to bend this at a 90 and then come into this T fitting and then we will tie the two front brakes in down there at the bottom. So I've seen a couple pictures of people doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where it goes in here so I know I can't bend any further back than that and uh, we're just going to gradually bend that and so the easiest way to bend it is um, I just get something that's circular and try to bend it around it uh, you can get a tool that does it as well I've got one of those I might use that but um, yeah that's that's pretty much our next step the other thing I did other than marking it in that spot is I did mark the top side that way we know where the 90 needs to be because once we take it off, it's kind of hard to tell where it needs to be. So let's get this undone and we'll attempt to bend that. So I put the line back into place and there is the bend that I have. So let me grab my T fitting and I think that's going to work. I may cut a little bit off of it and make it a little bit shorter, but yeah, I think that's I think that'll work. Now, I've bent these lines down just about every which direction and I think that we're at a point where we're going to go ahead and cut the ends off, which is means we're super committed, but we're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm just using a regular cutter 
Um, there's other options out there as far as cutting goes. You just want to make sure you're real careful. You don't want to pinch too much, just a little bit at a time. The next place I'm going to cut is here. And uh, this is, you know, it, you can run it a hundred different ways, but this is just the way I've chosen. I was going to use that bin that you just seen, but um, I kink that line trying to bend too much. So I'm going to have to undo this and it's actually going to have to run a little bit closer. So this is where I'm going to cut right here where I kinked it. And like I said, worst case scenario, guys, you can go get some new brake line. It's not a huge deal, uh, but yeah, we are cutting this off. show you here what I'm thinking um, I may cut a little bit off of this and you got to be careful because you can't you still have to put the fitting on and be able to flare it so you can't go you know super high but I think I'm probably going to trim a little more off of this as well but this one I think is going to work um, so basically our next step is to flare these ends and uh, not really a hard process In fact this this is kind of an, an aluminized brake line. It's not like hardened steel, like the ones that uh, you buy at the parts store, which are incredibly hard to flare and they're incredibly hard to cut as well. So what we're gonna do is grab the flaring tool. And like I said, I'll probably trim a little bit more off this. I'm gonna put the fitting on and just to make sure when I get the flaring tool into place, how much I have, how much room I have. And it looks like I'll have quite a bit, so I should be good there. And uh, that's the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you do when you're flaring other than, you know, making sure the flare tool doesn't slip. You always want to make sure that you put your fitting on before you flare it because obviously once you flare it, you can't get the fitting on. And I've done that in the past and that's extremely frustrating, especially when you don't want to rebend a whole line. You know, if we mess up this long line that goes all the way to the passenger side, that's a huge line to have to remake. So uh, just make sure that you get your fitting on there and let me grab that flare tool well guys i have my flaring tool out now and um kind of how this works is first of all we want to make sure uh that we put our fitting on first that is the first thing that is the most important thing i've left it off in the past but i did trim a little more off this line this is the one that came out of the actual solenoid and is going down to the t so it will be the piece that comes in like this well I wanted it to set up a little further, so I did trim a little bit off of it. Now, anytime you trim some off before you flare, it, it's a good idea to use a deburring tool if you've got one. I don't actually have one, so I'm just going to use, I am going to use a file and just file down the end. So once we filed that down, I want to make sure that there's nothing on the end of it here and it looks nice and square, which is what we want. And then we're going to take our flaring tool and it has different sizes now. Um, we are using the, the three or the five six or the three sixteenth size, sorry. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of like brake clean or carbon choke cleaner because the last thing you want is your line to slip out of this and a lot of times there's grease or dirt in this and obviously if you have grease or dirt the line could slip and that would cause you some issues so I'm just gonna make sure that it's clean always a good idea to do that so once we get it cleaned out you can go ahead and set it up and um, like I said, there's different sizes depending on what line you're working on. The line that we happen to be working on is um, 3 16 And you're wanting to set this, you need your, your die, and you're wanting to set it where that die actually is going to be. So that's how far out, how far, or how much you want sticking out of the other end. You can see there, need to come up just a hair, but 
that's how much needs to be sticking out. Once you do that, now we're going to go ahead and tighten it. Now our next step is we want to make sure that we get this good and tight. And I'm actually going to use a pair of pliers to tighten it up because we do not want it to slip. That is uh, something that you definitely do not want. These other ones I'm going to do in the car. So I figured it'd be easiest to show you guys this one outside of the vehicle. And you'll get an idea of kind of how it how it's going to go together. All right, so now we put this in. So you put the die in and we wrap this around. And we got it where we want it. I'm going to use a little bit of WD-40 just so it goes really nice and smooth. Also going to use a little bit of that WD-40 on the end of this. So once we get that, it is time to run this down. Now this process is really kind of the easiest part. I mean as far as uh, setting things up, but once you get it, making sure that it's clamped on the back side, you can go ahead and start to run it down. And you're going to run it down until it stops. Then you're going to loosen it back up. You're going to take your die out and you are part of the way there. So to finish it up, we put this back into place and we fold it over on itself by running this down. And you should still have a little bit of lubricant left on it, so it should be fine. And we're going to go till we stop again. And we should be finished. Let's take a look and see what our flare looks like. This is one of those things that you can really screw it up, but if you, after you do it a couple times, it gets way easier. Hopefully our line didn't slip, it didn't look like it did. And now that actually looks, looks pretty good. So we are set with that one. Now we need to do the other two on the lines in the car. Well guys, we have it all hooked up. Um, I didn't show you the, the flaring of the brake lines in the car. I ended up taking them back off out of the car and flaring them outside of the vehicle. It just was way easier, except for the one that goes to the back. I did have to flare it in the car, but you can do a decent flare job if you take your time with the cheaper kits. Now, honestly, I'd love to have an Eastwood brake flaring tool. Uh, but I don't so this is what I dealt with and uh, all in all it looks pretty good You can see that I still have the towels there. I have not bled the system yet, which will be my next step I'm, I'm gonna have to unhook the brake line in the back, which we'll talk about down the road in a future video but uh, I am gonna go ahead and bleed the lines and then I'm going to wrap each joint with a paper towel and uh, the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to make sure that there's no leaks. Now, if there's any leaks, I will let you guys know. I'm not going to do that in today's video. I'm also not going to worry about the wiring because we have some other stuff that I want to get accomplished before I go on to wiring that switch inside the vehicle to hook up the line lock. But I will say this has been the most tedious and hardest part of this whole adventure 
has been just that brake line bending because you bend a line and it's not where you want it so you have to redo it and the kit does a decent job getting it into the place this places that you want it like those pre-bent lines are great i really don't i probably wouldn't run them over the fender like they do but i'm sure that they're allowing for room in other places uh, my i got a buddy who ran his on the back side of the fender at least a proportion valve which looks really nice and if i were building the kit from scratch which honestly wouldn't be that hard other than getting the correct size fittings um, that is probably what i would do i don't know that i would do the sjm but i will list their info down below and uh, like i said guys this is i've still got the zip ties i haven't trimmed them up we will trim those up down the road once i make sure that nothing is leaking but if you guys are enjoying this content, if you like this line lock kit, smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, please go down there and hit that subscribe. While you're down there, make sure you ring that bell icon. That way you're notified every time we drop a new video. And well, stay tuned because we have, obvi well, obviously, we have way more to come on this thing.